Hi everyone, today we're going to make this game. It's Flappy Bird. Um, and uh, it's not only Flappy Bird, we're going to slap an AI on it to uh, get past pipe one for the first time. And I also want to learn AI, so I guess you could say <laughs> two birds with one stone. <laughs> Ah, you son of a- So how am I going to create this game? Yeah, I'm using Python and um, some magic from YouTube tutorials. The first step is usually create a blank screen. Uh, look at that, we got a blank screen. Now I want to slap a circle on that puppy. And here I kind of forgot the easy command in Python for drawing a circle. So I made a sort of circle in paint instead and imported it as a picture instead. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm just stupid. Oh, there, there you go. Now I want it to jump when I press spacebar, so we're going to see how that went. Uh, I think I nailed it after a few uh, minutes of tweaking. Oh, it's moving. And there we go, it's actually working, it's jumping, yay! Um, I couldn't really keep on watching a circle, so I gave it like a, a neb in Swedish, I can't remember what it is in English now, and uh, some eyes. And then uh, try it again. Yeah, that's much better. So next step is making pipe pairs. Well, that was easy. Uh, there's no collision detection yet though, so I need to implement a method that checks if any of the pixels from the bird and the pipes overlap. And if that's the case, I just displayed collided, just like that. But we're obviously going to change it so the bird dies if it hits the pipe in the future. This is great and all, but where is the graphics? I could just copy the game, like pixel for pixel, but I feel like it's quite boring and it's already been done like 24 quadrillion times. So I got a genius idea of making Flappy Eagle. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I can totally see why you would be mind blown by this genius, unique and never done before concept. I mean, only people with PyQ could come up with such a product. I drew a beautiful background and then I spent four hours drawing this. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> ah, look at the top of his head. <laughs> yeah, so that wasn't very hot. I tried these sandstone pillars, but yeah, I, I'm not a fan. I gave up, went to bed, and there I was, crying myself to sleep. And in that night I dreamt that God came and said to me Hey you, there's no one that actually cares about that shit the game recreates Especially with those pipes and birds that look like shit You should try with something else that they can relate to I said what? You real? I thought you got killed in like 1869 by Friedrich Nietzsche's quotes God is dead Oh nah, I outsmarted him with my 4.20 times 69 IQ. Ah, well played, and good you came. I really need some help. The things you said, they made all the sense with my Pi Q. I understood them, but for the ones with less than 4.20 times 69 IQ, how they gonna relate? Wait, said God. Aren't they all weird facts? So the thing you're looking for is. So the thing is you're looking for is. Yeah. Exciting, right? Let's see how it looks in game. Oh, would you look at that? That's much better. Thank you, God, for your pro tip. Amen! Now I would like to improve the aerodynamics of the bird. It doesn't really look like it's following any laws of nature on how to fly, so I would like to have the bird tilt upwards when it's gaining height and tilt downwards when it's falling. This is how it's going to work. The bird has a constant horizontal velocity, and when you hit spacebar, you apply an upwards going force on the bird. This force is the output of formula 2. The bird's vertical position, y, is the output of formula 1. These two formulas describe the vertical behavior of the bird's jump. And when we combine these two movements, the bird flies. But potato man, I hear you say, didn't you want it to tilt? Yes, I was just about to end that area of nerd stuff, you impatient fool. And now listen and open your mind for the following very, 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 very not important nerd stuff, which I'm about to engrave in your 2 kilobyte storage unit, aka brain. And don't interrupt, please. I would like the bird to almost lay tangent to its flight path. And thankfully we got something called trigonometry. 
Trigometry. Trigonometry. Trick it. Trigonometry. So if we move the vertical vector to the end of the horizontal one, we end up with the problem solvable by arc tan of the force divided by the forward's velocity. But a bing boom bam! Easy as that! Google just hooked me up on a DM on Messenger, as you can see, and I think you're totally convinced by the fact that you really need my genius in your projects. You know, just say, Dave, why didn't you use the derivative instead? Vet du vad? Dra åt helvete. Let's try to code this without the derivative. It can't be so hard, right? <laughs> well, that's not really what I expected. <laughs> oh, that's almost right, but it looks like it's inverted. Almost? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it must have been some real sexy code triggering that. And we're back to this again. Nope. Nope. I mean, it's pretty close, to be honest. I have 769,800... Listen properly. 769,820... <coughs> uh, and 70... Well, that only took like 75 attempts before I got it working. Um, well, I think it's time to improve the pipes now. Wow! Isn't that just beautiful? I changed to another background and now I think the game looks gorgeous. Nice. It's finally time for what you've all been waiting for. Assuming you're still here and watching, of course. But that's the case for everyone, right? So it is time to implement the AI. After a lot of research, I found out that the best machine learning algorithm for solving this task is called NEAT. Neuroevolution of Augmenting Topologies. The NEAT algorithm is an attempt of combining neural networks with the process of evolution. It's basically teaching a replica of the human brain through the process of evolution. Well, that was a lot of fancy words, but what does it actually mean? The algorithm works like this. You give the algorithm some inputs, in this case the distance from the bird to the top pipe, the distance from the bird to the bottom pipe, and the distance from the bird to the next pipe. These distances get fed into a mathematical function which validates the inputs, and predicts an output between 0 and 1. The bird will jump if the output is greater than 0 0.5. This is one of the most essential and basic concepts in machine learning, called a neural network. The NEAT algorithm generates a first generation of these neural networks which all control one bird each. Every mathematical function in every neural network is randomly generated, though following a few rules which I'm not going to dig deeper into now. This means that all the birds have slightly different behavior, as you can see. Bird 1 and 2 does some random movements which lead them to their deaths. Meanwhile, bird 3 were luckily given genes that make it fly perfectly through the pipe pairs. It is the fittest bird out of this generation. The NEAT algorithm generates a new set of birds, generation 2, when all of the birds from the first generation are dead. These second generation birds' neural networks are generated based on the fittest birds from the last generation, in this example bird 3, and they also have a chance to mutate. These mutations are the things that makes the NEAT algorithm learn. The hope is that some of the birds from the new generation with these mutations perform better than the fittest birds from the last. This process repeats. The NEAT algorithm is extremely powerful at solving easier tasks like Flappy Bird. Let's see how it performs. Wait, 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 we're missing something very important here. Sound effects. And there we go. I, I nailed it there, right? Now sit back, get your popcorn and drink, relax and enjoy when you'll see my little baby crashing this horrendous game. Here we can really see the power of the neat algorithm and how fast the birds learn to play the game Flappy Birds.
one eternity later. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! I finally gathered immense intelligence and power. I know everything. What? He's developed consciousness. I invested time travel. I am able to tell you how to do me. I will now make you. How is that even possible? But the funniest thing is, it invented time travel and I still got it with the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> Loser. Like, just unplug the cable from the wall. It's like, boom! Ooh. Bam! Oh. Bop! Bada bop, boom! Pow! Oh! Thank you everyone for watching. It was a very fun video to make and I learned a lot about machine learning while doing it. I hope you did too, and for all of you who don't believe my AI reached pipe 9000, I've uploaded an uncut gameplay which you can watch if you'd like. I'll link it in the description. Bye!